gives us a chance to rectify some false information regarding that makeup in Henry Hull. That fine actor's great nephew, Cortland Hull, provided us with the true story. The comments that Henry Hull didn't want his face covered in makeup due to vanity reasons, or that he couldn't stay in the makeup chair for more than an hour, which isn't true, all began with a silly believe it or not type newspaper feature called Seeing Stars in 1935 that stated Henry objected to it. Wrong! Yeah, the real reason that Henry disliked the makeup was due to the script, which had both Valerie Hobson and Lester Matthews characters recognizing the world as Dr. Glendon. Henry stated, how could they recognize me when I was Pierce's teddy bear? Referring to the earliest makeup that totally disguised his features and had ears on top of his head. We only see a shadow of that makeup version once in Spring Byington's room in a scene shot very early in production. Oh, he's funny! Not quite. Anyway, there's no surviving photos of that actual bear-like version, and the second makeup Pierce came up with was similar to the version that he later used for this movie, The Wolfman. Still obscuring Henry's features, and when Pierce refused to alter it, Henry Hull went to studio head Carl Lemley, explained why he objected, and Lemley agreed and sent Pierce a memo to tone down the makeup. Well, Pierce was furious, and Cortland notes that because of that, you'll never find a photo of Pierce making Henry up as the werewolf. In fact, he didn't even want Henry in his makeup chair more than absolutely necessary, and he used a series of four dummy heads of Henry, which were used in two of his transformations. It was Henry who pushed for the Widow's Peak hairline to create a more demonic look. Henry was a talented makeup artist himself and always applied his own makeup on stage. He did his own makeup for his Broadway performances as both a younger and older Edgar Allan Poe, doing his own makeup changes between acts, even inventing a special headpiece to depict Poe's cranial structure. He also did his own makeup to portray Mark Twain. Now, the rumor that Henry Hull would refuse to sit in a makeup chair for over an hour for Pierce was ridiculous because in 1934, in fact, he even sat for Pierce to do his makeup as the convict Magwitch for great expectations. So, that's the true story as told to his great nephew by Henry Hull himself. As Henry told him, Hollywood loves gossip, my boy. Once it's printed, people accept it as fact. Burton says he used to question his Uncle Henry about World of London so much Henry would say, my dear boy, you grill me like a cheese sandwich. <coughs> By the way, the influence of the werewolf London makeup with the widow's pink hairline has influenced many later werewolf makeups, like the one for MTV's show Teen Wolf. We thank Cortland Hull for giving us the information and photos to set the record straight on Henry Hull. And you should check out his nonprofit Witch's Dungeon Classic Movie Museum in Bristol, Connecticut, celebrating its 50th anniversary in 2016. It's a great collection of figures from classic monster movies, and hey, do you think someday they'll add a figure of me? Hell no! Go to Svengoolie.com for exclusive web content, my blog, videos, jokes, and more. You can use your mouse.